Hi, hola, my name is Brittany Santana, Brittany Santana, and today in this video we're going to be painting together. Or if you want to do something else while I'm painting, it's going to be really fun. Today I'm going to be painting Kylie Jenner in her feature in the WAP music video, or the WAP music video, uh, the Cardi B and Megan Thee Stallion song. Uh, I really wanted to paint Kylie Jenner today. I was going to paint an Instagram photo she posted today, but I remembered uh, this look and I was like, oh, this is a lot good, a lot better because the one I was going to paint was just black and white and a grayscale, so it's not as entertaining as like a leopard print, obviously, and she looked really good in this song, so I wanted to paint her. And you're gonna be basically or painting with me or just hearing me talk and I hope you enjoy this video. Uh, we're gonna start uh, obviously with the leopard print since it, is, since it is the longest thing we're gonna be painting I think. Um, I don't I kind of have an idea of what I want to use to paint it but I'm not sure. I'm not I don't think I'm gonna make it just as like just exactly like the the photo because I'm not even looking at a reference or anything. I did draw her uh, outside of the camera because drawing her and painting her takes a long time. So I'm not gonna make like a 300 million long video because uh, I I can't. You basically won't see it. So I prefer that. I don't know if you're interested. Uh, it's caramel and it's burnt sienna. I don't really know if like you care to paint this too, but I don't know, maybe you do. And if you do, well, you want to know what I'm using to paint it, possibly. Well, today, what I, the reason why I'm filming this is because I saw a video, a video, I saw a movie yesterday. And it was a really fun movie. I recommend you guys to see it if you can. I saw it um, in Netflix. I saw... What is it basically? It, it's called... Oh, I saw it in Spanish. It's called Perfectos Desconocidos, which would be like perfect uh, strangers. Well, I saw this movie and it's about basically a group of friends that they go to one of the, 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 the friends' houses and they're supposed to like eat dinner and like up to their, their lives and stuff and just talk. And what comes up in the conversation is like, hey, like your phone is basically like an extension of you. So what would happen if you just put all of your phones in the center of the table and if it, if it rings, if there's a message, a call, anything, all of them have to hear it, not the person that which is, which is like the owner of the phone. And before everything starts, like all the, the, like the, all this plot starts, you get to see all the characters and you kind of see a glimpse of their lives, kind of not, you see a lot of their lives because basically you have to relate to them to even care for that to like see their phones and like their movie so you see a lot of their lives and what comes up is like well basically you put like a phone in the middle and the only thing you should be like scared about is oh if you cheat then if your phone rings and there's it's another woman then oh my gosh and that's kind of like what everyone's saying like oh yeah did you cheat if you didn't if you're not cheating then put the phone in the middle and as the movie continues, I'm not going to be like spoiling it, but there are a lot other things that are personal that aren't necessarily cheating that you don't share. Um, kind of like there's things that they're not there. Maybe you don't share them, not because they're like bad inherently because cheating is inherently bad, but things that you don't you hide because you don't want to be judged for it because it's embarrassing but they're not inherently bad or maybe they are but they're not as bad as like the the normal things like oh you don't kill you don't rob like there's other things that aren't as bad but they're on a gray scale 
And something that was very interesting for me, something that I realized pretty quickly is what I give like my phone to my boyfriend or my friends. And no, and that's kind of sad, don't you think? Like you're basically uh, like very sure that you wouldn't be giving your phone to like people that you're supposedly close to. And that's that made me like I enjoyed the movie, but it is a sad reality that there's things you're hiding all the time. Maybe less things at some times. Like if you're living a pretty good life, if you're if everything's good, then you're not you are you are probably sharing a lot more things, but if you're in a bad time in like a bad place in your life, maybe something isn't going as you wish, you're not you usually don't tell people that. Like you tell people, oh, I got uh, hired, oh, I got promoted, but you don't tell people, oh, I got fired, oh, um, my boss told me I didn't work well that day. You don't really say those things because like people try, people will pur purposely hide the bad things that happen in their lives. And that was very interesting because then maybe like cheating is, cheating is still bad, but there's other things things to be afraid of um, that can hinder uh, like your relationships. For example, I don't know. Mm, I don't want to spoil the movie, but there's like just in the matter of like different morals and perspectives normally people say like oh don't talk about politics or religion in like the in like this the table like the, the dining table like when we're eating don't don't start talking about politics and religion because that's uh something that people will never like see eye to eye but there's a bunch of things that people don't see eye to eye uh for example uh plastic surgery you there's not necessarily like two opinions two different opinions in, bla in plastic surgery they're like millions of opinions there's like it's not black and <clears throat> it's not black and white it's basically so much grays in the middle and you normally don't get your friends normally aren't your friends because you have the same moral compass you normally have like you enjoy their company and that's kind of it and sometimes you may sit in table and tell them certain things that you think and realize oh these people don't think like me and that may be something cool something maybe conflicting and sometimes it can ruin a friendship it can ruin a relationship and it's not cheating it's not lying because the, the topic never came up or you never asked but look how it's ruining your your relationship now and well sometimes i actually am in that position now that i think about it uh there's things that for example i purposely don't talk about because i know most of my friends for example maybe aren't okay with my opinion and they're not going to change my mind and I'm not going to change theirs. So I feel like, oh, it's kind of not worthwhile to just talk about this because there's no sense nor use for it. We're just going to fight. And some of you may be like looking at this video and be like, oh, oh, well, I would fight for that topic. Um, and that's also a thing like people some people are like, oh, if he cheats, I'll leave him. And some people are like, well, depending on like in what time or if I have kids or a lot of things. But maybe like it's not as like like hurtful as cheating. Maybe it's like, oh, I lied about my age. Oh, I lied about something. Oh, I did this instead of instead doing what you told me to. And some people will think, oh, well, this is worth leaving you and sometimes it's worth not like some people may say oh if you have this political agenda for example something more obvious i'm not going to be friends with you 
for, like the obvious example is on like in a lot of influencers or like you, people on YouTube said if you follow Trump, if you are like、um, pro Trump, then I don't want to have anything to do with you. And I'm not necessarily saying that's bad. It's just a different moral compass because there's other people that say that say I don't like Trump and I think. This about Trump, but if you're my friend and you follow Trump, well, we just have different opinions, but we're still friends. And I don't think I don't think that person is wrong. I don't think the person that leaves, like the relate, like the friendship, is wrong. For example, the reason why people tell you like, oh, don't work with your friends because they're not your friends because you like their work ethic. They're your friends because. You spend a good time together. They're loyal. They're fun to be around. And maybe in the workplace, they're not. Maybe they're lazy. They、uh, expect too much out of you. Maybe they're too cocky. Maybe they don't. They don't do their work right. They're unorganized. Like those things. But you've never considered them until you've had. You needed that thing from them, or you ex- expected that thing from them. Normally, when you don't know that information, you just assume that they're just like you until you are proven wrong. The question now, basically, is what makes it not okay anymore? Like, you're not gonna unfriend them because they don't like your music, but maybe you would unfriend them if they are. Let's say they are a hater of your like your favorite artist, and they're like, "Oh no, how can you like that person? How can you not? Why do you hate them? Why do you disrespect them? Like on internet and forums and stuff." That like that can be came from something that's like, "Oh, it's okay if you don't like that music," to, "Oh, I can't be with you," or like for example, if they don't like that music, let's say they don't like. R&B, and you're like, oh, that's cool. It's okay if you don't like R&B, but then you want to go out. You want to go out to a club, and you're like, oh, I want to go to the disc club. You can't count on that person because, let's say, you choose an R&B club that like plays a lot of、uh, plays a lot of R&B. That person won't want to go or won't enjoy themselves. So you basically had to distance yourself in that aspect. Like now you can't count on them for this for this type of、um, entertainment. Now your friend is a friend on on like on certain things. When does that become a problem? When is like you not liking something, you thinking differently from me, make us fight and make us have bitter experiences in our friendship or in our relationship? Because there could come a point if that you have. Differing opinions and things that you just can't accept from the other person. Like you just can't be like, oh yeah, it doesn't matter if you think differently. You're like, no, I want you to think the same as me. For example,、um, my sister, she's vegan. Well, she, now she's not because of, of some like personal things, but she's she's vegetarian now. But before, she was like. I would need to date someone who's vegan as well, like because if I have a boyfriend and he's like, "Oh, can you make me a a, a burger?" and she's like, "No," and I can't eat with you. If you do, for example, my sister—no hate towards my sister—but my sister, when we would eat meat. Uh, she would like eat at a different time than us, or she would eat like at her room because she didn't even want to be in our presence when we were eating meat because she didn't like it. She just didn't want to be there when we were eating meat.、Uh, but she got a boyfriend, and that person eats meat, and it came to a point where like she gave up that ideal in favor of. Like coexisting, I suppose. So, like, if he wants to eat a a steak, for example, if she wants to eat, if he wants to eat a steak, she'll make it for him. Does she? I think she does. Or, for example, right now she's、uh, she's actually 
uh, selling food. She sells food because she lost her job in the process of all this quarantine. And now she's making food and she sells it um, in her apartment building. And these people, they eat meat, so they ask for uh, meat products. Like they ask for, oh, can you make me a burger with some fries? Oh, can you make me like a milanesa de pollo, una, una suprema? Um, basically, um, food that is that has meat in it. it. Chicken meat or cow meat, it has meat in it. And it's her job now, so she does that. So, for example, in her case, she gave up, uh, well, the, the conflict ar arose in the relationship and they came to like a resolution. Well, I suppose it's easy because let's say you go to a restaurant on your first date and he eats a burger. You already, from the get-go, <laughs> know that he is not vegan or I suppose that most I suppose that vegans like tell them like they tell you like oh I'm vegan before you go on a date I suppose because they can't just go any anywhere so they'll, they'll probably have to choose the place but let's say that you're two meat eaters and along the way someone becomes vegan your priorities now your morals have changed and let's say you're not okay with someone eating meat right in front of you. There is something that you might hide from your partner and be like, oh, everything's fine. Then in the case that the movie happened in your real life, maybe like a message arose of a friend of yours saying, oh yeah, your, your boyfriend's an idiot for eating meat. Because in the conversation you were saying like how you hate him for like not respecting you and eating meat in front of you. And that's like probably a comment you wouldn't want him to see, obviously. So you didn't cheat and you're not necessarily doing something wrong, but the lack of commu communication makes the possibility of the other person finding out uncomfortable. And you'll have to talk about it. And eventually the reality is those messages or those morals are hidden because you don't want to lose that relationship. Obviously, I'm giving an example because I don't really want to give the examples in the movie because I really suggest you to watch that movie because it's really good. But it's something that you have to think about definitely because there's things that ruin your relationship that aren't necessarily cheating. Like, let's be honest, the real, the main reason why people stop, like, the, the relationship ends is because of lack of communication. And you obviously don't know where that lack is until like someone else pulls it out or sometimes it's just hard to, to notice it sometimes for you something isn't important and the other person is like begging for you to stop okay guys i finished a lot of it off camera and i'm really sorry about that but as i've said before i can't film the whole process because if not, this video is going to be super long and people don't want to watch it. But be calm because I didn't do everything. Basically, now what we have to do is the details. And when I saw this video and I was thinking, um, would I give my phone to my boyfriend, for example? And I was like, yeah, but let's be clear about one thing. Uh, me and my boyfriend share our phones a lot because his phone is pretty broken. So he has his Instagram, his mails, he, his emails, his everything in my phone. And when he uses my phone, I have all my stuff, like my Instagram, my email, everything on his phone. So it's kind of like without me wanting it or not, he has full access to my stuff and like my emails, my notifications, they just pop up. So he'll see them anyways, either way, basically. Uh, and that makes you, I'm not the type of person to hide my problems to him. Normally if I don't like something, I'll be mad or I'll tell him, like I'll discuss it with him. Like, hey, I'm, this is going bad, we should fix it. But, for example, 
having your phone full access to your partner makes you have to tell that person your problems. If not, they'll find out either way because they have your phone, their phone in their possession. This is obviously not for like the toxic people that have like have like the people have toxic relationships. But even though, like even if you're in a toxic relationship and you can't leave it for some reason because you love him so much or whatever, but you know it's toxic. So you know, like if he's checking your phone, you know why it, it is. You know it's because he's toxic or because he's just using it. Because I don't when he t when he knows that something happened in my emails or like someone's talking to me, I don't look at it as oh he's spying on me or like he's checking up on me because our relationship isn't toxic. He just like he just came upon it and he just looked and I don't. It doesn't bother me that he looks. Because I don't have anything to hide, and we have our same, the same passwords and stuff uh, for like the like the pin for our phone. So it's kind of like if you make your secrets accessible to your partner, there's less feelings of guilt or embarrassment because most of the time we are not hiding things that like deep dark secrets we're probably hiding things that we think will be judged over so like and most of the time we have that feeling like oh we'll be judged but in reality we're not we won't in reality when we let that person that loves us see what we're embarrassed about normally they'll be okay with it and they'll even encourage us to not feel ashamed about it so in reality we're just fighting our inner problems and if in reality let's say your boy here let's say uh for example you have a youtube channel because i was i had a youtube channel for dancing and i didn't want him to see my videos and it's kind of like he he would get mad because like why don't well, why will you let like strangers see this video but not me it's just because I didn't want him to judge my videos, basically. And when he saw them, he didn't judge me negatively. Uh, that kind of went away. So, and as you let them, every every there will always be something that will embarrass you. But if you let yourself be exposed to the possible embarrassment and it comes out actually fruitful and nothing bad happens, then you will feel even more open to your partner or your friends and you will also see that if they aren't being positive towards you then that is not a, a real relationship or a real friendship obviously talk things out like hey this bothered me but if they don't care then that's not a relationship and i understand most people know this but they fear the fact like they fear the reality the reality that this is fake the, the reality that oh I'm, these people are my friends just because of this they already know the reality because most people you don't need to force them to see that they're in a bad friendship or a bad relationship normally they just they already know that they don't want to leave it like or for example things as simple as there's things that your boyfriend do, 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 does and it bothers you well if you talk to him about it then it would probably be fixed it would probably be solved but what are you doing you're venting to your friends so you're mad when you're mad and you vent to your friends then you're not mad anymore because you've already vented basically but the problem will come up again and you'll vent again to your friends till there gets a point where or he leaves you because he doesn't understand why you're always negative towards him or you leave him because you think he never listens or he doesn't care and the reality is you never even talk to him about it but for example if he has access to your phone and I'm, saying, I'm not saying give your boyfriend access to your phone I'm just giving like an example that if this secret thing is taken taken off away from you then you are forced to communicate with that person 
if you like let's say you lose your friends or you lose your phone you can't communicate anymore so when you're angry you're forced to vent to him because there's nobody else that can listen to you and once you vent to him and he knows what's the problem he can fix it but normally normally that happens a lot girls vent to their father to their mother to their friends they the last person they vent to is their partner but the thing is you're not dating your father you're not dating your mom you're not dating your friends you're dating your boyfriend so kind of think about that if like think see the movie obviously because it's great i'm not sponsored i'm not i can't even have a channel to be sponsored to but literally that movie was so funny so so shocking as well but think about it like think would i give my boyfriend my phone like for a day or for a whole night and not be worried of the like a message that can come in a call that can come in and not even like would you feel embarrassed if or would you feel guilty if there is is there a negative emotion coming from him seeing your phone and if there is then there's something you should guys should be talking about because there's something that's not right in your relationship and that's why you want to you're hiding it in your phone okay guys we come to the end of this video as you can see we finally finished kylie jenner i did the blue background it's actually kind of like a a blue kind of green background but i didn't really want to do like the the details in the back because honestly all i wanted to paint was kylie not necessarily the background of kylie this is the final result i think she looks really pretty and really happy i kind of finished it pretty quickly i didn't keep on talking because i need to cook it's my job it's uh, it's my job to cook in this house so uh i'm going to go prepare food for both of us so i hope you enjoyed this video i hope you think or take my what i said to heart and if you think this is something that affects your life uh, in some way then try to s fix it <laughs> basically try to see what i talked about and try to find a way to make it better for yourself not have more secrets just stored in a phone or in an email or having secrets with the people you supposedly care about i think is the worst thing you can do so take that in mind but i hope you enjoyed and uh i hope to see you in another video bye